Welcome to this hearing of the Joint Committee on Rules of the California Senate Assembly. Uh, the purpose of today's hearing is to receive a report prepared for us concerning the State Capital Annex uh, project. And um, I will open and then pass the opening to my colleague, Senator Anthony Canella, the uh, vice chair of this committee. And then we'll hear a report from our architectural firm. Um, as we start this hearing, I, I definitely want to begin at the beginning and acknowledge and thank the leadership of Governor Brown, who with his administration, his senior personnel in 2016, initiated a conversation about what to do with this annex. Um, it's a peculiarity of my career that in two months before I was married, in July of 1975, the governor signed a bill by former Assembly Rules Chair Leon Ralph, uh, AB 207, moving the funds for the West Wing project into the legislative accounts so the legislature could proceed. And of course, to this day, the West Wing is a beautiful structure. We see people walking through it, walking up to it, sort of gazing at this symbol of our democracy and enjoying it during their visits on a daily basis. And so we come now uh, during the governor's second tenure with the prospect that he might be signing the funding bill that would provide funding for the second half of the state capital facility, a conversation which he himself initiated with the support of his senior team, Mar Maribel Batcher, Secretary of Government Operations, Julie Lee, uh, Director of Operations in the Governor's Office, uh, Mr. Daniel Kim, Director of General Services. Maribel and Daniel Kim and their senior staff met our staff over in the Ziggurat building uh, in the spring of last year to have a long conversation about where we needed to go, what types of studies would be appropriate. And the study we will hear about today is an outgrowth of that conversation with the governor's senior staff. Also, Jason Kenney, who's the direct vice uh, Deputy Director of the Real Estate Services Division in DGS actually has accompanied us on trips around the country to look at some state capitals because many states are sort of ahead of us on this curve of looking at old dated legislative facilities and updating them. So there's a lot of pathfinders on this conversation that we've been able to learn from. That was actually our first hearing last summer, hearing from someone who's been in the middle of those projects. Uh, I'm delighted to see our state architect, Chet Widem, here today. He's been very gracious to me uh, in conversation and providing support. Uh, and uh, then on the financial side, we've had active involvement from Keeley Bosler, the Cabinet Secretary for Governor Brown, and of course, Michael Cohen, uh, Director of Finance, who uh, was, I've been in his office many a time, and he's been in my office helping, uh, helping me and our team just think through what we are doing. Um, so, um, I think this project represents an opportunity for us to do three very important things for the people of California. One is improving access to the building. And uh, we know that the building, the annex was built in 52. It does not have sprinklers, but it also, the, the ADA access is not there. We walk around the building. Those of us walk past these lifts all the time, not realizing how cantankerous they can be, how bulky they can be, how if someone has a, a motorized chair with room for their crutches in the back, that, that that may actually not fit the lifts we provide. So there's many ways in which the building is not welcoming to all Californians. The sheen on the floor does not address people with visual ocular impairments. Um, and even the, the hard surfaces in the corridors affect the noise level that can affect people with hearing issues. So there's many ways we might improve it. And this actually would be in keeping with the original intent of Californians. I, I greatly enjoy the fact that when you're in the West Wing and you walk up and down those staircases, decorating the bottoms of all the new old posts carved in the wood are pineapples, which are a symbol of hospitality, because in the 1860s they had to come to the continental US from Hawaii. And it's, it causes me to reflect that when the building opened in the West Wing, everybody who went anywhere in the building using those staircases, everywhere they turned, there's a pineapple. Remind them of the welcoming message of the people's house. It is a marvel to me that the West Wing, with so many great symbols concerning our democracy and welcoming people, 
so rich with symbolism. Then we come to the annex and the symbols are not here. Somehow there is a total fail to carry forward this vision of hospitality and the use of symbols to convey the meaning of our system of government. When you get in the annex, they're just not there. Uh, also, just the idea of supporting greater civic engagement. I think uh, when I first started the building in 1977, what the kids had to see was the county exhibits. Then my first boss in charge of the West Wing added the museum rooms, which was a great leap forward. And now you go to the Getty Museum, the Los Angeles Museum of Natural History, our own Golden State Museum. The technology of interactive exhibits is so much greater. And so I think a building project allows us to weave into it a greater experience for those who would come to learn what our democracy is about and participate. Um, and this supports our civic engagement generally. So um, to conclude, I just want to note um, how we got here was that, and I think this is important for transparency purposes, in December of 2016, uh, shortly after I became rules chair, we prepared a request for information seeking architectural firms with people's house experience to see if they'd be willing to assist us in a study of this building. Uh, we had uh, eventually seven firms submit. We, we used legislative staff to redact all the identifying information from those various proposals. We used a member of my staff and a member of the Senate Assembly staff to review those proposals using a scoring matrix that was prepared by an outside law firm that specializes in construction. So we had a law firm that did this sort of thing as their bread and butter, look at the RFI, tell us how we could score these things, consist with the RFI, train the people that did it. We even made our staff sign non-conflict agreements to establish that that was sort of a squeaky clean process. When they were done, all we knew was that they had the top three. There was no ranking provided. They were not telling us who they thought was the best. They just gave us the top three. And then uh, on a day last year, uh, Senator Canella and I, with Ms. Gravert and Mr. Alvarez, uh, convened presentations where the top firms came and presented. So the firm that we're hearing from today is the firm that went through that process and rose to the top. And so you see that reflected in their work. Um, I do want to remind people that there is an Annex website for anyone who might look here. Um, it's annex.assembly.ca.gov. Annex.assembly.ca.gov. And anyone going to that website, even now this morning, as this hearing is underway, will find links to everything, including the report. We've, we've kept that website up throughout the past year to make everything we're doing very accessible. Um, and um, obviously, another object to this is at the end of the day, we have all those fourth graders who come here, the public who comes here, people who would be unfamiliar with this building. We want this to be a safe building to visit. Uh, so parents who, who send their kids to a delightful day in the Capitol have an assurance that that's how it will unfold.